Okay, so Pi News episode 78. First up, really good news if we head over to RPI Locator. You can see here a couple of places have got Pi Zero 2Ws. Loads of Pi Zero Ws are available now and at sensible prices uh, all over the place. But the one I'm more excited about is Raspberry Pi 4s and you can see loads of places have got them. So Pi Moroni have got the 8 gig Pi 4 for 74.94 in the UK, which is the price that it should be, uh, which is great to see. Uh, and there's a load of Pi 4 4 gig models. Obviously, I'm in the UK, so I'm concentrating on the UK, but you can see the other countries that are there. Uh, 54.96 for a 4 gig model. Pi 3 A Plus is where they've been around for ages. Pi 3 Model B Plus, 1 gig of RAM. I don't think they've been around loads. And you see two gig models of the Pi 4 for 45 pounds. And since the last Pi News, there's been all sorts of information. So uh, if we go to YouTube, uh, Keo Deakin had this interesting story about 10,000 Raspberry Pi 4s for sale. And it was a hospital and it was something to do with COVID. Uh, obviously, you can watch the video if you want to know more about it. Uh, but uh, someone was buying them to sell on Amazon. And uh, if we have a look, there's another close up of of some of the boxes here. But yeah, 10,000 Raspberry Pi 4s that weren't being used at all uh, and were just stuck in a box somewhere in America in a hospital. Worth an absolute fortune, but actually worth less now because obviously the prices have stabilized now, which is great to see. And we also had on Facebook, uh, which was saying that one, two and four gig Raspberry Pi 4s are available. And uh, again, at a much better price than we'd seen before, but Amazon is never as cheap as the official sellers. And we also had, so this is Micro Center in Tustin, counting about 30 Raspberry Pi 4s. Nice to see them, and they've got some 52 Pi cases there as well. So stock now is much more readily available, which is great news. Uh, and hopefully it will speed up the release of the Pi 5, because once the Pi 4s are all sorted out, it would be lovely to see a Pi 5. Next up, from the official Raspberry Pi site, Eben Upton announced that new functionality Bluetooth has arrived for Pico W. So if you're waiting for Bluetooth for your Pico W project, you'll be delighted with that news. They announced that they've sold over half a million of the boards. So you can update your existing devices firmware and all the details are available in this story. I'll link it in the description. And we had some great content from Jeff Geerling as usual. Uh, he's been over in the UK. He went to Penn Cohen in Wales, which is the Sony factory, uh, which manufactures Raspberry Pis. And there's some brilliant footage in there. Obviously head over to the video if you haven't already seen it. Obviously loads of people have seen it already. It's a, a very popular video. Great to see them being manufactured and, and how it all works and everything. Lots of inside information in that video. And we head over to Jess' channel. He also did a short video as well, which is how a Raspberry Pi is made in 60 seconds. That's a great one as well. We also had a video from Jose who develops PyKiss for Raspberry Pi. If you haven't got PyKiss, it's an easy installer for games and applications and lots of tweaks and various different things, which just is all automated. It's very, very simple. I've got separate videos on it, but he's released Fallout 2 Community Edition on there. And if we click in, if you don't know what Fallout 2 looks like, there's a bit of a tutorial on how to get it up and running. And it's a sort of two top down, was it isometric view? And uh, yeah, some people who used to play that back in the day will be very pleased about that. Always good to have more games on the Pi. And this was an interesting story. Uh, Raspberry Pi camera, you can see, looks super old. Uh, there are, what's there, six images here. So you can see on the back, it wouldn't have had a LCD screen back in the day. Does it really nice. And you can see there is a Pi Zero in there and an official Raspberry Pi camera. Now we click on the story. I do reenacting and wanted a 1940s camera so I can take photos without breaking authenticity. But film is expensive and working 40s cameras are even more expensive. Enter the Raspberry Pi. So Pi Zero W, Raspberry Pi high quality camera module, 16 millimeter lens, and so on. And lots of details in there. And there are some images that have been taken on it. Oh, it says here, all you need to do is add some post-processing to make the photos look like this. Oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, I didn't see that image before. So the other images I'd seen uh, were the original images. 
and you can see the one that we were looking at just now. So this is what the camera had taken and uh, obviously with the effect applied. It's cool that you'd, you'd be walking around with a camera from that era but perfectly usable in a digital format. And anything about ZX Spectrum always gets me interested. So a Pico based ZX Spectrum emulator and you can see here that it's got a little tiny screen but it has got a VGA output as well so you can have it on a proper monitor. It's nice to see. Looks like all the writing is on there that was original to the Spectrum. The project consists of all the necessary code to emulate a ZX Spectrum upon the hardware of a RP2040, so a Raspberry Pi Pico. If so desired, you can go bare bones and use the Pico to run a ZX Spectrum off a breadboard with HDMI video output. Alternatively, you can build something like the Pico ZX. And there's a bit of a video here with an original Atari joystick. We had a 2600 back in the day with that style of joystick. I won't play the video as usual, but I'll just skip through because I think it shows you a bit inside. Attic attack. Yes, it looks like it's being taken apart here. So you can see the top panel coming off with the keyboard and everything. A bit more inside. I just love seeing inside things like this. Uh, here's the VGA. Oh, that's an original um, joystick port as well. So that's what the Atari joystick was plugged into. Oh, and next picture was going to show me that anyway. Yeah, very cool. I still think some of the Spectrum games are very playable today. I've got a separate video on Raspberry Pi. Uh, and I think I might have one or two videos on Raspberry Pi with ZX Spectrum games. Very easy to use. And also there's a website you can just go to and play them on the website. And if we look at the comments, I did like one of the comments. The project from the picture looks like it achieved something I thought was absolutely impossible. Building a computer with a worse keyboard than the original Spectrum. And very cool use here. Tinkerer uses Raspberry Pi to make a giant dot matrix printer. So you can see here that, hi dad, your pizza has arrived. Oh my god, it actually works. Like and follow for more. Computer uses a truck and water tubes to print messages on the road. When Ryder Damon saw workers painting a street near his house a few years ago, he wondered if he could build a machine to paint words on the road. He did just that with a specially coded Raspberry Pi and a lot of ingenuity. Damon's machine tells the tubes when to open and close to form different letters as the truck moves. I'm going to watch the video, but I'm not going to show it. Yeah, that is, that is super impressive. I'll put a link in the description. It's definitely worth watching. Next up, we have uh, something unusual, a, uh, a pocket computer, which is not that unusual for a Pi. But when you see the keyboard, it is very unusual. Looks like quite a nice display on it. Got a little kickstand as well. There's loads of details on GitHub and all the information about what's used for it. Teeny tiny chock switches. Rotary encoder and accelerometer to emulate mouse function on the keyboard. Custom 3D printed enclosure. This looks very neat. All the 3D print files are there. And there's a video on how you use the keyboard. So Artsy is the style of keyboard it's using. He wants to build an even smaller version. I'm going to watch the keyboard video. Wow, I don't think my brain would take it in, but uh, you can see from the video that he's actually typing probably faster than I type on a normal QWERTY keyboard. And uh, yeah, it's, it's impressive. Another Pico device, and this one is, uh, well, basically it's a, like a fork of an original, so the Pico pad, but this is the Pico Boy. If you have a look at it, it's obviously very small. The games are very limited. There's a video showing the games I wonder if, you know, things like this, if you're going to put this much effort into it. I mean, obviously, if, it, if it's learning, then it's, then it's great for that. But obviously, a Pi Zero 2W is so much more powerful. Not that much more expensive. Obviously, you can't get them very much at the moment. But once they come back in, yeah, for this sort of thing, I would, I would much rather a Zero 2W. It's a really powerful device. But uh, you can see various different versions here. Pico Pad. And there is a video in here if you want to see what sort of games run on it. It does actually show the gameplay and everything. Oh, and actually in the video, I'll show some stills because they do take it apart properly. So there's a bit of gameplay. Not good for car games. Uh, Pac-Man looked all right on it. Uh, and you can see that this it starts to take it apart. as a little sort of stand on there. We've got USB-C, micro USB, a little lithium battery on the bottom. There's the Pico. And there's a proper sort of tear down and, and takes it completely apart. But there's links if you want to have a look at this on the project's hackaday.io page. And there's also uh, the original project is there and also the GitHub if you want to just try the games with a breadboard and the display. And last up on Reddit, it's just it's just a good image in it. Uh, so this is, I tried calling my Pi 4 with coins. There's a few images here. And they have tried to space the coins so they work a bit like fins. But obviously it's, it's going to be pretty limited. 
Uh, but they, it's more for the comments on this one. You can see there's a fan blowing across it as well. And some temperature tests. And there's lots of tips. You want surface, not volume. People talk about so aluminium has a lot of thermal conductivity. Copper would be good if it was, weren't so expensive. Pennies have zinc cores. How thermally conductive is that? And zinc sucks. Those are Eurocents. They're made of copper plated steel. I have no idea what this means in terms of thermal conductivity though. And there's, there's loads of information. I love threads like that. Uh, in fact, if we, we have to have a look at the salvo and see if they still list the copper Raspberry Pi 4K the salvo systems. So I got sent one of these and it is just a lovely case. Uh, the Phineas is better at cooling because I got sent one of these as well. And also this one, I think is the other one I've got. But yeah, when you see the copper one, especially, I'm not as uh, fond of that design, uh, but uh, yeah, these two. In fact, is that copper? Definitely a different color. $79.95, no, red anodized. So anodized um, back in the 80s, uh, I'm, well, I'm, I still love BMXs. They used to have lots of anodized parts and it just makes aluminium look really cool because you can have it in whatever color you want. Oh, and it's, it's the silver and the red, that does look cool. Yeah, very, very nice and very effective. Obviously completely silent cooling. They didn't send me one of these, but uh, you can see it's 250. It's an expensive device, but it is probably the best case I think I've ever seen for Raspberry Pi 4. Okay, so hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.